Hi guys, it's Nicole and I'm back today with another layout in a series which is using a 20 sketch sketch bundle designed by Allison Davis for 6x6 paper pads and these are all one page sketches. Today I'm working with sketch number 18. I did just take a quick peek back in the back end of my channel because I was getting ready to tell you guys that I had been working on this for the last year. Turns out I've been working on this bundle for the last two years, so I would say I have a goal to finish this up before the two year mark, but that's only like a month away, so I'm not 100% sure that I'll get there by then. I didn't realize that I had taken this long. Um, Typically on my channel, when I do like a deep dive into a sketch bundle, I will just sort of stay with it until it's done. For some reason, these ones I did not. And this one, I'm not sure what, I, what happened. You can see the 6x6 pad right there on my desk. I forgot to use it. I ended up cutting all of my papers with full-size papers, so I'm not real sure what happened. About the time I realized it was when I was almost done and I was getting ready to cut some die cut stars and I was like, oh, well, I guess we can cut the stars with the 6x6 papers and some part of my brain will be satisfied with that and I can say that I used 6x6 papers. Um, the other thing I quickly wanted to mention, I had asked in my Facebook group if anyone had purchased this new trimmer and if they liked it or not. Um, I was kind of on the fence about it just because I couldn't really see it in person and like the reason you can see my head in so many of these shots is when you're looking at it like this, like from my camera view, you can't see the edge of the metal, like where the rotary blade is going to cut, but if you get your head right in there, you can see it. So. My mother-in-law actually ended up purchasing this. She did not like it, so it came to me, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll give it. A, I'll give it a test run." I didn't have a problem with it, other than one of those little photos I cut wrong, and I kind of think it was me, not the trimmer. I don't think I was holding it down, which it's fine. I wasn't sure that I was going to mat them anyways, so I was like, you know what, it's it's fine, I'll just cut off all of the white and we'll, we'll come back to this later. This is the part where I wish I had been paying attention because I prefer the smaller prints of 6x6 pads, which is why I almost always will buy the 6x6 themed sketch bundles that they put in their shop. So I'm not really sure what was going on in my brain. I had also was looking at some of those papers for a background because this is paper that I bought 10 years ago, put in my shelving and proceeded to walk away from until today. So um, I had pulled this probably months ago when I did my original prep video. I packed this all up, took it to a crop with me, did not get to it and today I guess was the day that I was kind of in the mood for this. I was thankful that because I didn't get to so many things at the crop I do have like five or six layouts worth of projects still kind of kitted and packed. So technically I haven't completely unpacked from the crop. Basically what I'm doing is I'm pulling one of those like prepped pages that is typically with a sketch and then as I work on it, I'm pulling everything that I had packed to go with it. And then when I finish the layout is sort of when I go and put everything back. Um, man, even watching this back, I am kicking myself because I really like the patterns in the 6x6 better. I think just because they are smaller. And I tend to struggle with like bold type patterns in general. So for me, most of the time, like my larger video clips and the bigger chunk of the actual process for me is just making paper decisions, cutting those paper decisions, and then changing my mind and trying to find a better solution or a solution that I like better. The sketch actually called for you to cut the papers so that 
they didn't go behind the photos. And you would think that this would be the part that would have clued myself in to be like, if I was using a six inch wide paper, I wouldn't have enough width to go behind my photos, thus the instructions to cut them. I was like, no, these are 12 inches wide. I'll just cut them 10 inches, stick them behind my photo, and I don't have to play the, the game of lining up like strips with a gap. If I had read the instructions, I think a little bit better, it would have reminded me that this was a six by six paper pad bundle. And I probably would have <laughs> would have remembered that the thing was there. I think at this point, it's like off to the side of my desk with the pack of embellishments. Um, and that's probably why I just kind of forgot about it. I think I got focused on the fact that I had a stack of those papers. So I probably just thought that's what I was supposed to use. No, I had packed all the 12 by 12s in case I wanted a 12 inch border and then the intention to try to use one for background. So this is definitely a case of like a good example of why if I run through a bundle of sketches I try to stay in that bundle until I'm done because I tend to lose track of my personal goal with like a sketch bundle. So in this case, I've been bouncing around between creating with collections, the 6x6 pad series, um, the previous video that had some puppy photos. That was just a random bundle that I had purchased a couple months ago, and some of the sketches caught my eye, and I was like, oh yeah, let's do this. They're not actually geared towards 6x6, but they work with 6x6. I'm just kind of all over the place, but... If you've been here for a while, that is sort of the theme of this channel. If you are new here and you don't like mess or chaos, that's totally fine. Hit the back arrow. It, it's fine. Or I'm not running like a super professional show here. Video making and showing you guys my process is sort of an extension of this hobby and just another avenue for me to share and be able to kind of answer how I do things, I guess. This sketch called for banners. I hadn't done banners in a while, so it was kind of like a fun tradition to go back to. Um, typically, I will just measure the first one if it's like a repetitive size. So like all of these are one inch. And then because they're 10 inches long, I just folded over the one end and traced it to get the other side. For all the other ones, I had taped them together with washi so that I could kind of move them around and make sure that I liked the order. I did play with the order a little bit off camera and it's just easier for me to pick them up as one whole piece instead of messing around with a bunch of pieces. And it actually had an added benefit of just being able to kind of go down the line with that first one that I cut and just use a pencil to trace it and then I will just do like a freehand cut. It's not super perfect, sometimes it's not even centered, but it doesn't bother me. So at this point I finished cutting all my banners, finally decided to commit to a pattern with those and then I didn't film my stitching because at this point was when I had I did the scrapbook generation online crop, so I think the night that I was doing the stitching was the night that Allison and Stacy were doing their live Q&A. So I scooted over to my computer desk and did my stitching while I was watching that. And then the following day is when I'm coming back here to do my embellishing and I had actually jumped onto a like video crop. So I cut my dickers to spell boy oh boy. I also did that off camera. I used the Henry's Alphabet from Lawn Fawn that I've been using in the last few videos. That thing has a chokehold on me. I just keep pulling it out. I think it's just, it's a fun, playful font without being like only childlike. To me, it's just a really good one that's less structured than like a sans serif font or um, like the the bold one from scrapbook.com. I think it's called Bold Basic. Like this one's just a little bit fun without being like super childish or super young looking. Um, I did have a pack of die cuts that apparently I had ordered with this collection. I don't have stickers. I don't know if it did have stickers. Like I said, this collection is probably, it's got to be at least 10 years old. 
Um, I might end up doing like one more layout with it and then sadly it's probably going to go into my purge pile. Um, anytime I put purge boxes up, I've been doing it in my Facebook group just because it's a little bit easier. If I can sell it there without having to do a video and post it here, it's just a little bit easier for me. So like I said, if you missed out on the previous purge boxes, be on the lookout for that. If you're not in the group already, link will be down below. And just keep in mind that a lot of the stuff that I'm finding and I'm putting in purge boxes is super old. I sent a box of really old basic gray stuff to Sarah Scraps and she's actually already used it in a video on her channel, which I was like amazed. <laughs> <laughs> she's a big basic gray fan and I don't even know why I had bought so much of this pet line but I was kind of glad that I did because now I get to watch her use it and come up with like really cool layouts with it so that was kind of like fun that somebody with a channel had grabbed one of my purge boxes so those two little photos that I mentioned that I kind of goofed on my cutting earlier I noticed that there was some Polaroid dies in that die pack, so I checked and my photos were actually perfectly sized to fit in it, so I was like, great, we're just going to go with that. It'll get two die cuts used up, it'll kind of save me some time on matting it. And then I just kind of went through the dies real quickly and picked anything that I thought would work. Um, this was a gender reveal party for my sister, and she had like a cute little like baby animals but it was like wood woodsy themed so I pulled like the deer and the fox and then that little star wasn't my favorite but it was gonna work out as a place for me to put my title on when I first put it on there it just kind of felt a little bit boring not having something layered behind it and I really wasn't feeling a doily because that's usually my go-to is to pull out a doily and layer it behind stuff if I feel like something is getting lost or it's just too busy so the star ended up working out and I've mentioned this before if I make a decision and I'm somewhat happy with that decision I will immediately start gluing stuff down I don't really like moving things around too much. I don't like arranging and and everything's like moving every time you bump into it. I'm pretty messy, so if I can get something attached and it's not going to move around and then I can move around a couple pieces that I'm not 100% sure on, that works for me. Um, I did keep the embellishing pretty simple. Mostly just because there's so many patterns going on, there's stitching, and then there's kind of a lot of photos for a one page. So I just stuck to some of those larger die cuts, and then I grabbed a label from my stash, stamped the date of the party, and tucked it in. And then this was the point where I was like, you know what, I really want to add some little tiny stacked die cut hearts. This die is my favorite for that because you get so many in one pass. It's an older one from Mama Elephant. I thought I had left it out. I'm pretty sure it's Star Confetti. If I can find it, I will link it below. It is older, and I'm a budget girl, so I tend to shop retirement sales. I tend to shop clearance sales, warehouse sales. So a lot of times I'm finding stuff on its way out but there's a lot of different options for this same thing. There's a couple different Lawn Fawn sets where one in particular is like a tag builder, but you actually get tiny hearts and tiny stars in it that I've used in this application as well. Um, typically when I'm looking for stuff like this, I will type in like the phrase confetti and dye on like Simon Says Stamp or scrapbook.com or any of those and I'll just kind of start scrolling and see what I can find. A lot of times I'll look at new releases as they're getting added to the stores 
and anything that kind of jumps out at me I'll look and see like what are the extra little dies that they squeeze in there to see if those would be good ones to do this where I'm stacking some layers of white cardstock and then making my own like super matchy super coordinating top layer this particular thing has a chokehold on me you guys know this I don't know when I'm going to stop doing it I enjoy the process I find it calming I like putting them together and then I like putting them on layouts if I had more time I probably would have put 30 more stars on here but it was getting late and I kind of just needed to wrap it up so again this is my completed layout as always, I thank you guys for spending some time with me and chatting with me over in the Facebook group and down in the comments below. And I will catch you guys probably with a creating with collections video next.